Hi, welcome back to DIY Newbie to Pro. Our newest project is we want to install a ceiling fan over our bed area in the bedroom. The project does have many challenges and the first thing that we did was determine because we have a slide and if the slide is in you don't want to hit the fan obviously and when I'm putting the slide in I don't want to have to deal with moving the fan blades so everything's clear. So what we did was we put the slide in and I put a pe two pieces of masking tape where the slide stopped. So right in the middle is where the slide stopped. So I have that much room to go with my fan blades once I mount the fan housing up. And then I went and I looked and said, okay, well, if I measure it out, that's kind of where my hole should be for the uh, electrical supply to come down. And then what I did was I took out something in the ceiling so I could see how the ceiling was built because it depends how you're going to mount the fan. So I had a speaker here and I dropped the speaker down and I went and looked and I have the vinyl for the roof and then there's a piece of foam, and then there's a form of insulation, styrofoam, and then a very, very thin piece of wood. And that's not enough to support the motor unit. This is the, the motor unit. And our fan that I'm putting in is a 12 volt unit. So it's gonna operate off of the motor coach battery and is mounted with three screws that don't match any electrical boxes. So what we're going to have to do is devise a system that will allow this to mount on the ceiling like that, hang down. And I did measure the height of the ceiling fan in my head so that if we walk underneath it, it's not going to strike us on the head. But it also will not be centered over the bed. But those were the uh, options that I had that's the best bet. And then once I did take this out, I wanted to find out where the supports were. The supports in the motor coach run... Um, perpendicular go from side to side instead of front to back and there's a aluminum frame right here if you reach in you can feel it and there's another one over 16 inches because that's what your air conditioner is mounted on so there's another frame right here so I'll have a channel that goes down this way over to my electrical box and connections it's a 12 volt system so I'm going to tap into this which is the 12 volt I will have to remove the 115 volt box so I can get behind it to run that wire over. My one biggest concern when running the wires over is, is there's going to be some duct work here because I have a duct here and a duct here and the air conditioners here. So I have to bypass that and make sure I'm not going to hit that somehow. So I'm going to take the cover off of the air conditioner, drop it down and see where that duct goes and how they plumbed it in so that I know that when I'm running my wires, I'm not going to have a problem or when I'm mounting the ceiling fan in the ceiling, it's not going to get in the way of the duct work. Once I put a three inch hole in the ceiling here so I can get in and see what's there, I'm going to put two bars across and then I have some carriage bolts that I'm going to mount into the metal and that's going to drop down to the holes I'm going to drill in the ceiling. So this fan housing will just bolt right up onto that and so there'll be metal bars on top supporting it down up against the ceiling. So it's not going to over time sag the ceiling or pull the ceiling down and it'll distribute the weight. So what I'm going to do next is take off this cover and see where the ductwork lies and then once I know I'm clear I'm going to drill a three inch hole here with a hole saw and then run a snake over and down so I get behind here so I can have the channel to run the wires and then this unit does have a remote switch and I'm gonna have to install the remote switch also which is right here and I'm thinking of putting that the easiest place is underneath here onto this panel because it has easy access Okay, I've removed the air conditioner covers. You can see in the duct work here goes out this way. So it's going to go down here, connect and make an elbow and then over to that one. So I'm, I'm pretty clear of anything here. I did put the fan blades together so I knew what my distance was going to be. And I did make a mark on the ceiling where my tape was just to make sure everything looks good. It's going to come down about that far went with the housing and so forth. So I'm not going to hit the slide when it's in. It's clear of everything else and it's still at the edge of the bed. So you'll be able to walk through here without having a problem. So I feel comfortable that that's the spot we're going to go to. So we're going to make the commitment hole. I have my hole saw. We're just going to take our time and cut through the vinyl and fabric. 
and then we'll have our hole of where we're going to mount the fan at for the electrical work to come through. So we're just going to take our time in cutting. Okay, we're through. And we'll bring out the plug. And so that's going to be the hole we're going to work with. And I'm hoping that that's big enough to get my steel rod through that I'm going to use for mounting pieces. And I'm going to show you the ceiling structure, why you just can't screw into it. Here's your vinyl. You have foam. Then you have styrofoam. Then you have this board here that's a rigid board, but it's not strong enough to support the fan. So that's why we have to put something on the top part of the ceiling to mount it into. Uh, some RVs do have plywood in the ceiling. If you have plywood, you can just screw right into that. You don't have to go through what we're doing here. I removed the panel box and pulled it out forward because this is where, and I ran a snake line, which is a piece of metal all the way down and I got to the edge of the wall. And so I listened to where it was. Now I'm gonna drill another hole similar to this one behind the panel box because there's not one there. And then that's where we'll drop our wires down into. So we'll run wires from here to there using the snake. We'll just tie a string onto it and pull them through. The motor has uh, three wires coming out. It has a ground, a blue, and a white. So I took my, I got several spools of wire of the colors that I need, and I taped them together and left one long piece. This is going to go in the end of my snake, which I pulled through the ceiling in the back. So you just take that long lead, push it through bend it over and then you're going to tape this up and then we're going to pull that through so that we have the wires where we need them. So now that's taped through and I have a wire loop on there so that should not pull through and as I pull this up I'm going to help feed it in the hole and we're going to pull it through. And I have my wires. So I have wires at both ends now. I have, this will be my power supply in. And remember, this is going to the 12 volt system, not the 115 volt. And this is still live, by the way. So you want to be careful with metal and jewelry and so forth. And then I'm going to take um, some wire, some tape, and I'll tape this up so we don't lose them and give me plenty of extra length so that no matter where I go with it, I'll be good. This is the flat rod that I'm going to use on the top part of the ceiling. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to get into there to um, set it in. So what we're going to do is I have two screw holes here that I marked. I put the motor up and I used a pencil and marked where it was. So what I'm going to do is uh, make a couple cuts on the rod and keep it as long as I think I can get it to make this work. For the ceiling mounts, I took some flat aluminum stock, drilled holes in it, pushed the bolts through and banged them in. They're square carriage bolts so they won't spin. And they're just long enough that it will allow me to push them up into the ceiling and line them up in the hole and pull them down so that it um, will go through the screw hole and then that will provide a support for the wire for the ceiling fan to fit on. So it's just going to be a, a, a task now is to line up the holes and get it to go down into there. So I'll do that next and okay so I pushed that up in there in the ceiling and with that rod and I found the hole that I drilled and I'm going to push it down and then there will be my first mounting bolt will be right there that I can put the ceiling fan onto. So that will help disperse the weight. So I'm going to do that with the other two bolts. Then I'll have my three areas to mount the fan. I have the three bars in and I have them disperse different areas to help uh, distribute the weight. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to take the motor, and which is here, and we'll wire it up in a minute, and put the bolts lined up with the holes and then put the the washers the lock washers on so that everything is lined up and it'll be mounted to the ceiling so i'm going to mount that on there now i brought the bolts through the ceiling and put nuts on them and lock washers i was going to try to use a socket to tighten it up but one work was too tight so i ended up using needle on those pliers and just tightening each one down so it's good and snug and it's in there I then used crimp connectors to connect the uh, wires at this end. I haven't done anything at the other end. So now I'm going to finalize this, put the housing on, the blades on, and then put the other uh, equipment back up that I took down. And then we'll work on wiring it on this side. As you can see, I put the housing on the outside of the fan, mounted the fan base up, just for all the directions in the, the fan kit. Reinstalled my cover here and reinstalled the speaker here.
so the roof area is now complete and what I'm doing now is working on the wiring we ran the wire three wires over already and I wanted a spot to put my remote switch we were thinking about putting it on the wall but it'd be too difficult to run and fish the lines all the way through so I decided to mount it right underneath the cabinetry here so I used the jigsaw and I cut a square hole underneath and what I'm going to do is rough wire everything down to make sure it's all working correctly. And then we'll test the fan. And then once I know everything's good, we'll just push this back up in. And I still have to run over a hot line and a negative line yet, which I'll do next. And we'll test it. So in about 15, 20 minutes, we should be able to test the fan with the remote switch. Now that we've gotten all the wires over into the box and so forth, I've run from the motor. There was a blue and a white and a green. So I ran the blue and the white down to the switch to the blue and white on the switch. And then there was a red and a black. The red would be to the positive power source and the black would be negative. In this case, because it's a DC unit, this is a 12 volt DC fan that will be grounded. And so I ran air all the wires. I put a jumper on my circuit breaker here for the uh, power supply it's fused and all you can get those at the auto parts store it just plugs in and it's how you can add a circuit without any problem at all i grounded it to the panel box even though this is a 115 volt panel box it's still grounded to the chassis and the, the chassis is also where the ground is for the dc current in the whole motor coach so that's my grounding source and so I have, um, I have a ground from the motor and I have a ground from here, the negative, which is the black. So they're onto the box here with a crimp connection and an eyelet and screwed into the screw frame. So now the only thing left to do is to see if the fan works. So if we take the on switch, turn it on, it's functioning. Look at that. So we have that going. And then we have different power speeds. And that seems to be working good. And there is a reverse, but I'm not going to do that now because the fan's moving and you shouldn't test the reverse while it's moving. You'd have to stop it and power it down. So we'll turn it off for a moment and we'll stop it. And I'll hit the reverse button. And the reverse button does work. So it does reverse also. And now it's pushing air, it feels like down instead of up. So we'll slow it down. And there's no wobble in the housing, so that's good. So the mounting system worked. And I can feel the benefits already without having to run the air conditioner. We'll get a, a nice cool breeze blowing on us when we're sleeping. Okay, so the only thing I have to do now is take the switch push it back up in, put the face plate on, close this all up, put the covers back on, vacuum and clean up my mess, and we're all done, and we have the fan in. So, thank you for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe down below. And the reason why you should subscribe is because you never know what we're gonna get into. And it's great for you to learn from our experiences, and this way you can DIY many things and save some money. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you later. Bye.